Hi everyone, this is Douglas at PCC, and by watching this video, you will learn some amazing tips to optimize your PCC EHR experience. I've got six patients left this afternoon, and you know, I accidentally arrived or, or checked in this patient down here who's actually coming in much later this afternoon. No problem, I will select the visit and use the edit menu to revert the status of the visit back to scheduled. You're working on a new patient and you're wondering, where's that chart you just had open? You can use the patient finder field up here to see up to the last 10 charts you had open. No matter what I'm doing with a patient's chart, I'm reviewing a problem list or filling out a referral, I might not be able to remember the primary care provider or maybe I need their most recent weight. No problem. Click on their name and age title up here. And you can see the patient's PCP and their most recent weight and percentiles. Maybe I'm entering family medical history for a patient and I realize this patient has a brother or a sister I can right click to copy these family history notes to the siblings. Are both parents information in a patient's demographics in their chart? And what do you do if grandma might be bringing the patient in for appointments? Put additional folks into the patient's record with the personal contacts component. You can put this component right on your phone notes too, so everyone can see who's authorized for what in the middle of the phone call. PCC EHR has the Fenton preterm growth charts built in. It's all based on this gestational age at birth field right here in the demographics component. And when this information is charted, over in growth charts, you'll automatically see the appropriate preterm growth charts. PCC EHR includes the AAP's Down Syndrome growth charts too. If the patient has trisomy, like here on their problem list, then over in the growth charts, you'll see the appropriate Down Syndrome growth charts automatically. I want to give this patient a handout. If I print this out, are they going to lose that piece of paper? Of course they are. You can send it to their mobile device using PCC's patient portal. I just find the handout like I just did, save as document, and I make sure this display in portal documents checkbox is checked. I can print out and give them the paper copy, but they'll also get it in their portal. If you want, you can send them a new portal message to tell them to take a look. If I'm charting for a patient's visit and I want to enter a diagnosis, I might not remember what diagnosis particularly I used formerly for this patient, or maybe I just want to pick from their problem list. When I click on this little down arrow over here, I can see the patient's active problem list items right here above this little gray line. That makes it easier to chart consistently for this patient. Speaking of diagnoses, when I search in these fields, I'm searching from my practice's custom list of a few thousand pediatric specific diagnoses. I can also right click with my mouse to search the entire SNOMED CT diagnosis library that's on my practice's system. Let's say this patient had chickenpox. I want that to show up whenever I'm looking at their immunizations record. No problem. If I put varicella in their problem list or diagnose it, then their IMS record will automatically indicate that. Your practice can configure which diseases should show up based on which diagnoses. One last tip about diagnoses, after you pick a SNOMED for the patient's chart, PCC EHR can automatically queue up the correct ICD-10 billing code for you, and you can configure that. 
In fact, you can configure it so that when you pick a single SNOMED, like the well child diagnosis, over on the encounter form, you'll automatically see multiple optional ICD-10s. You can pick the appropriate ones and remove the ones that are not correct. You can configure all of that in the Diagnosis Configuration tool. When you create an order and need to configure it for a certain user, you don't want to have to pick from a bazillion users. Your practice can organize this list and sort it differently using the User Administration tool under the User Selection List tab. Okay, one important piece of paper that you do hand the family on the way out the door, the visit summary. Remember that your practice can configure it to have exactly what you want on it. You can create a custom default configuration and then make changes right here even as you're generating the report. You can also create a special section called Clinical Instructions where you can decide exactly what kind of plan or other instructions to the patient should appear on the visit summary. There's corresponding configuration options for the clinical instructions in the patient portal as well. These little jelly beans on your screen can be very powerful. They're always visible no matter where you are in PCCEHR, and they can tell you how many patients are waiting. Some practices use them for other statuses. For example, physicians could use a come and get me status, or you could have a running behind status to alert the physician. What about a status for patients who are coming back later in the afternoon? Your practice can configure your visit statuses in the Visit Status Configuration tool. There are step-by-step -step guides with more details about all these tips on learn.pcc.com. And your client advocate can work with you to help improve workflow for clinicians and staff. If, if you've got a special tip for PCC EHR, post it on PCC Talk or send it to us. We'll make a video about it. Thanks for watching.